welcome friends so now we are on chapter number 13 and the title of the chapter is advanced rulings what is expected from you in this chapter this says comprehend the authority of advanced ruling analyze the procedure involved in making an application for advanced ruling examine the procedure to be followed for advanced ruling authority explain the application of advanced ruling identify the situation in which advanced rulings will be void and appreciate the powers of the authority of advanced ruling first is what is advanced ruling what is the purpose of advanced ruling why anybody can take which are the situations when it should be taken who can take it then comes a procedure okay so what is advanced ruling assume that tomorrow you want to import some article and many issues are involved in that say for example the drawings and design required for that that is being done in India but it is being paid by the vendor manufacturing is in some other country but from that country goods go to a third place there those are finished and then those come to India and those articles are capable of being classified into multiple categories and every category attracts a different rate of tax now your problem is what will be the exact qualification in that given situation what will be the taken into account for the purpose of valuation how much will be your tax liability who is going to answer that so if you don't have an answer there is a reason for confusion and when the goods actually arrive then it is up to the discretion of the officer to decide the value and determine the amount of duty you pay the duty and if you don't accept that then go for appeal this is a system of avoiding all this process so advanced ruling is a kind of guideline given by authority for advance ruling on an application made by the person who is likely to take up any activity because of which his tax liability may be affected that is a guideline kind we don't say exactly it is a guideline but it is a something something like a guideline and to be more precise this we will call it as a determination of a question of law or facts determination of a question of law or facts by the competent authority and the answer given by the competent authority which is called authority for advance ruling that is having binding impact on adjudicating authority also means today if we have the advance ruling that this article will be classified under this 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 heading for because of this reason and this will be the rate of duty and tomorrow if the officer is having some another opinion he cannot differ he will have to follow what is given by the authority for advance ruling but only for the person who has obtained the advance ruling assume that i have taken the advance ruling for me the classification will be the same as given in the by the authority for advance ruling but some sim similar article imported by somebody else there is no binding impact there is no binding impact right so the binding effect is that and advance rulings are given to avoid the disputes in future but where it is brought to the notice for to the authority of advance ruling that the advance ruling have been obtained by fraud or misrepresentation or suppression of facts then quite possible after giving an opportunity of being heard these advance rulings are withdrawn and if withdrawn then the officer will have a right to take action as if advance rulings were never given okay so this is what the chapter is now let's proceed further page number two the first definition activity this itself is important now 
activity means import or export and includes any new business of the import or export proposed to be undertaken by the existing importer or exporter as the case may be. So since the act deals with import export only, right? So it doesn't say that a person who is starting the activity of import export, any activity relating to import export even by the existing importer exporter but in relation to proposed import export. So import export which is already done in relation to that, no advance ruling. So the activity must be a proposed activity. Right. The activity can be taken up even by an existing importer exporter. So it doesn't say that a person who is already importer exporter to him the advance rulings will not be given. No. Any person who proposes to take up any activity of import or export and he is having any question of law or facts because of which his tax liability may be affected, then he can apply for determination of that question by the authority for advance ruling. Right? So there must be a question and question must be in relation to proposed activity and the question should be directly affecting the tax liability. Classification, valuation, exemption notification, special duties, these are major issues. Right, we will certainly going to talk about this specifically. Then what is the advance ruling? Clause B. This is a determination by the authority of a question of law or facts specified in application regarding the liability to pay a duty in relation to an entity which is proposed to be undertaken by the applicant. Everything clarified? This is only in relation to proposed activity and there is a question relating to law or facts and those questions directly affect the tax liability of the applicant. Now you will ask me who can be applicant? That is also defined. Come to clause C. Who can be applicant? So if I tell you in nutshell, as of now, every person. As of now, it is every person. Initially, when the concept is started, the number of applicants were very, very limited. But slowly, this definition has undergone amendments and as of today, literally every person is having a right to make an application for advance ruling, right? Only qualification is that he should be willing to be engaged in an activity relating to import or export, right? And today some advance ruling is taken and on the basis of that, that this is a final decision taken by the applicant that I am not going to be engaged in this activity because this is going to be the tax liability. Nobody is going to raise a question that you have taken the advance ruling, why you are not doing the activity? No. It is a proposed activity and quite possible after taking the decision from this authority on the question where the person is having a doubt, he comes to a final decision that this activity I am not going to take. Right. So literally I said everybody can apply for advance ruling provided there is a question I, and the question may relate to either law, that may be interpretation or that may be the facts. But that question should having direct bearing on the tax liability of the person in the proposed business activity. Okay. Now, who is applicant? I said literally everyone. Clause number one, A. A non-resident setting up a joint venture in India in collaboration with a non-resident or a resident. A resident setting up a joint venture in India in collaboration with a non-resident. So in sub clause A and B, involvement of non-resident is said to be essential. So either non-resident setting up a project in India, either alone or jointly with an another non-resident or a resident or sub clause B says a resident setting up a joint venture but with a non-resident. Number C it says wholly owned a subsidiary Indian company or and the holding company is a foreign company. Indian company which is a wholly owned subsidiary of a foreign company. So this is clause number one. Clause one says non-resident setting up a joint venture project in India either alone or jointly with a non-resident or resident. Sub clause B that says any resident setting up a project in India jointly with a non-resident. Sub clause C says an Indian company which is wholly owned subsidiary of a foreign company. 
Clause number two, a joint venture in India. Clause three, a resident falling within any such class or category of persons as the central government may by notification the official gazette specify in this behalf. And which or who as the case may be makes application for advance ruling under subsection 1 of section 28H. Now who are the persons specified by the government? A resident who proposes to import goods claiming for assessment under the heading 9801, that is proje project import. Then a public sector company, a resident public limited company, a resident private company, a resident firm. Literally everyone has been covered. Public sector, public companies, private companies, resident. Now if we go into the more details, firm includes right the firm shall have the meaning assigned in section 4 of the indian partnership act and includes a limited liability partnership as well as sole, sole proprietorship company partner, proprietorship as well as one person company so when we say a firm firm is not only necessarily a partnership firm this may be proprietorship firm this may be a partnership firm this may be a one person company this may be a limited liability organization llp right so as of today, literally everyone is authorized, right? So let me draw a chart for that who are applicants.